I went through hundreds of scientific publications to find the best sleep trackers that money can buy depending on your budget. Is it Apple, Google, Samsung, Aura, Whoop, Garmin, Polar or maybe Fitbit? Well today you're gonna find out. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time and the results are super interesting. It also shows us some major problems with sleep stage tracking that I haven't addressed in my previous videos. Now a spreadsheet with all statistics and references I based my findings on is in the description below and of course there are timestamps on this video's timeline to make things easier for you. Let's get to the results. And I want to look at two commonly reported types of results. One you might be familiar with that we're going to look at later is if the watch can track four different sleep stages. So light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep and awake moments. But the one I want to start off with is more simple. Can the watch reliably detect when you're asleep and when you're awake? And that's displayed in this overview right here. Now I'm going to add one brand of wearable at a time since each brand often uses the same sleep stage tracking algorithm for different devices. And in this way we'll get a good impression of how each brand performs. And I want to start off with Garmin. Now along the horizontal axis on this plot we have the sensitivity which is the percentage of all the sleep time correctly detected by a device. And on the vertical axis we have the specificity which you can see in a way as the percentage of awake moments correctly detected. Now if we had a perfect device it would be 100% on both these axes but none is that good so the axes are a bit shorter right here. And as you can see Garmin devices in red right here tend to detect almost all sleep time which is good I guess but they detect very few awake moments so they're very high on this axis but very low on the vertical axis and this seems quite close to the extreme example where a device just calls the whole night as being sleep time never detecting any awake moments at all. Now if it would be that extreme it would result in 100% sensitivity and 0% specificity and it's not quite that bad but it's getting in that direction. If we now add two studies that looked at polar devices which are plotted in orange right here we see that these have a lower sensitivity but in return they get a better specificity. So there seems to be some kind of trade-off going on between specificity and sensitivity. So I wouldn't say Polar is doing better or worse than Garmin but just different. And if we now add the results for different studies that looked at Fitbit devices in green right here, these also seem to be along this imaginary line right here where there's a trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. Though on average I am getting the impression that they're in total doing a bit better than Garmin and Polar but it's difficult to say anything definitive. You might also notice this gray Fibbit charge for right here. Now all the colored points in this overview are based on studies that focused on people with more or less normal sleep patterns whereas the gray ones focused on people with some kind of sleep issue so I wanted to mark that differently. But okay moving on if we next look at Whoop which is plotted in blue right here we see that both the Whoop strap 2.0 and 3.0 seem to make a trade-off in the opposite direction of Garmin. Whoop seems to sacrifice some sensitivity to have a slightly better specificity. Still, similar to the other devices, they seem to be somewhere on this imaginary line where there's a trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. Next, if we add the results for the Aura Ring in pink right here, we see that the older generation Aura Ring, so the Aura Ring Generation 1 and the Aura Ring Generation 2, seem to make a similar trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. However, the newer Aura Ring, the Aura Ring 3, does seem to be more on the top right right here, improving both sensitivity and specificity, so that's good. Some of these studies were paid for or supported by Aura Dose, so we should keep that in the back of our minds that some of these studies might not be completely independent. Still the fact that several studies show significant improvement of the Aura Ring Generation 3 over the 2 and 1 does seem to indicate some kind of improvement in Aura's algorithms over time. And potentially the same thing seems to be true for the older Apple Watch Series 6 right here and the newer Apple Watch Series 8 right here in Cyan. Now there are actually surprisingly few studies looking into the Apple Watch and the one that looked at the latest Apple algorithm was actually done by Apple itself which is marked as Apple Watch 8 right here. So we should be a bit careful with our interpretation. However this does seem to match my own findings namely that Apple is one of the best sleep trackers out there however only since this new sleep staging algorithm was introduced and before that it wasn't that great. In general this overview does show us that the same brand generally has similar performance independent of the exact device however with major firmware changes there could be big differences. Out of all these devices Apple and Aura seem to be doing the best in detecting sleep and wakefulness but only since their upgrade to the new sleep stage tracking algorithms and all other devices seem to be making some kind of trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. Now detecting if you're asleep or awake is what wearables would traditionally measure in the early 2010s with the launch of the first Fitbit tracker for instance. However during that same decade more and more companies started to do something much more complicated. Tracking the sleep stage is defined by scientists albeit in a slightly simplified form. These were termed light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep. This is actually really hard since these are usually studied in a lab using brain waves, eye movements, muscle movements and much more. 
Instead, a wearable has to do this based on just your heartbeats and movement. In my own testing, I've seen that wearables are becoming much better at this and more people than ever seem to be using them to keep track of their sleep patterns. Over the last few years, I've also found it's becoming much more accepted in the scientific community to use smartwatches and smart bands in sleep research. Uh, for both consumers and scientists, it's important to know which devices are good and which are not so reliable, since some of them are actually quite bad. Luckily, scientists are also recognizing the value in actually testing the performance of these wearables using reference devices such as polysomnography or EEG, giving us some idea which smartwatches are good and which aren't. However, they usually only test one or maybe a few devices at the same time. So similar to before, I went through all the literature and extracted the results from all the papers I could find to give us a good overview of the performance of different devices. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now before showing the results, I hope that my diligent testing has earned a subscribe from you and if you get value from this video, it would be great if you like and or comment, it really helps me reach more people, but let's get back to the data. And that is displayed right here, where along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage for that particular device. And again also in this plot we want the devices to be as far to the top right as possible. And Garmin devices in red in this case seem to be more towards the bottom left of this plot, which is not where you want devices to be. And even though all these four points came from different studies, they are quite close together, again indicating that the same brand likely uses similar algorithms across their devices. Polar devices, which are marked here in orange, are actually roughly in the same range when it comes to the average agreement, so the horizontal axis right here as Garmin devices. They just seem to be a tiny bit better when it comes to the worst sleep stage, so the vertical axis right here. Still, overall, they're also not doing that great. Interestingly though, Fitbit devices, which are displayed in green right here, seem to be doing quite a bit better. They have an average better agreement and also the worst sleep stage is not quite as bad. So this is looking quite good for Fitbit compared to Garmin and Polar at least. And also most results are clustering quite close together. So again, the same algorithm seems to be used across different devices. Only the Inspire HR are quite old devices doing a bit worse, but still better than Polar and Garmin. So overall, the same trend at least. If we now include the results for the Whoop Strap in blue right here, this seems to be roughly in the same range as Fitbit devices, though potentially a tiny bit worse, but it's difficult to say. Still, Whoop seems to be doing significantly better than both Garmin and Polar when it comes to sleep stage tracking. So next, let's add the Aura Ring in pink right here, and these results are actually very interesting. They might seem to be all over the place at first, but if we look at some more details, we see that the Aura Ring 2 seems to be in the same range as the older Whoop straps and the Fitbits, but the Aura Ring 3 is doing significantly better. And the Generation 3 Ring is the one you can currently buy, so the Aura Ring 2 you might be able to find on eBay or so still, but this is the one that's being sold at the moment. And this matches my own findings, where I also saw significant improvements when they updated the algorithm them on the generation 3 ring so this really makes sense however again be aware that some of these studies were sponsored by aura so the results might be a bit inflated but i personally have enough trust in the scientific system plus the fact that these results are super close together so they seem to be reproducible so out of all the devices we looked at so far the aura ring generation 3 is the best tracker out there but let's now add the apple watch so here we have the apple watch series 8 in cyan which seems to be doing quite well slightly better than fitbit and whoop and maybe slightly worse than aura but overall one of the best performers. Be aware though that this is based on Apple's own study and I couldn't find any peer-reviewed studies so Apple didn't send this for peer review so we have to be a bit skeptical of it. Also like all the other studies they just focused on mostly healthy sleepers. Still this generally matches my own findings though for me Apple generally does a bit better than Aura but both are very good. And also in my own testing, Fitbit and Whoop do quite well though they are second tier to Apple and Aura for instance. So overall, based on these results right here, I think that relatively healthy sleepers could probably get pretty reliable sleep stage tracking from both Aura, Fitbit, Whoop and Apple, where Aura and Apple have a slight edge over Fitbit and Whoop. And if instead you own a Polar or a Garmin, maybe take the sleep stage tracking results with a slightly bigger grain of salt. And one other poorly performing brand is Xiaomi with the Mi Band 7. This seems to be the worst performer in this overview, as you can see right here in dark green. Now this matches my own experience with watches from Xiaomi that it just isn't that reliable. 
However, all these results are based on healthy sleepers. But what if we include results from people with some form of sleep disorder? Well, those results are plotted in gray right here, mostly from one study, but I think there's one other study in here. And as you can see, the results change quite a bit. All the top brands in healthy sleepers that were also tested for poor sleepers, so in this case, Aura, Fitbit and Apple, seem to do significantly worse in their performance. And almost all devices drop to a lower range in this plot. Only the Amazon Halo Rise, a device I've personally never tested, seems to be doing quite well still. Also in this test, the Galaxy Watch 5 isn't doing that bad in poor sleepers, but it's still doing much worse than the other devices did on healthy sleepers. So based on all these results, the best devices out there appear to be Apple Watches and Aura Rings, closely followed by the Whoop Strap and Fitbit devices. Polar, Garmin and Xiaomi on the other hand do not seem to be performing that well. That being said, this only appears to be true for studies that mostly focus on healthy sleepers. If the focus was more on people with reported sleep issues, the performance of all devices drops dramatically, so keep that in mind. If you're searching for a device to track your sleep and you don't have major sleep issues, you could use this overview I provided to guide your purchase. However, if you have severe sleep issues, there might not be that many good choices out there. Though I do have to mention I only found a very limited amount of studies that actually focused on these people with sleep issues. Still, I find these results really cool and by doing this literature review and not just focusing on my own testing, I learned a lot. That being said, as you might have noticed, most of the devices in this overview were quite old and most brands have released much newer devices. That is because it takes quite a while to go from doing the actual research to having the results published in a peer review journal. So I also want to show you how these results compare to the results I got when testing many different smartwatches on myself using EEG and PGG reference devices. And that overview is displayed right here. Now just to be clear, most studies I looked at in the previous overview used polysomnography or PSG as the reference to test device. Devices. And in this overview, I tested devices on myself, some also using PSG, but most using different EEG devices. Now, these EEG devices also measure brain waves, eye movements, and muscle movements, but not quite as extensively as PSG. Interestingly, if you look at how devices performed on me, this seems to be very similar to what we just saw in the overview of the scientific studies. Apple Watches and then the Aura Ring 3 seem to be doing best, with a significant improvement of the Aura Ring 3 over the old algorithm used in both the Aura Ring 2 and the original Aura Ring 3. On me though, the Apple Watch seems to have a slight edge over the Aura Ring, consistently outperforming the Aura Ring 3 in average agreement and mostly in terms of the percentage of worst agreement as well. Fitbits and the Whoop Strap seem to be the second tier of the devices which generally matches what we saw in the scientific studies. They seem to be doing quite well though not quite as good as Aura and Apple. Garmin devices in red are a bit more spread out compared to what we saw in the scientific studies. However still they're not quite as good as for instance Fitbit, Whoop, Aura and Apple. Now I only tested one polar device in orange right here as part of this overview and as you can see it's in a somewhat similar range as Garmin which again matches what we saw in the studies which is good. And as expected Xiaomi devices in dark green are generally not performing that well. The Mi Band 7 somehow seems to be slightly better than the Mi Band 6 and Mi Band 8, though I suspect this is by random chance and if I were to retest them all over many nights they would likely give similar results and be on the bottom left right here. And just to get the best overview of the consistency between my results and those of the studies we were looking at before, I plotted them together right here. And we can indeed see that overall the patterns are more or less the same. The major difference in my opinion is that Apple on me at least seems to be doing a bit better than most devices. Whereas in the scientific studies, the Aura Ring seems to have a slight edge over Apple. Now I have no idea if this is because of my particular body physiology or maybe just not enough studies have been done on Apple Watches. Still, from both overviews we can conclude that both Apple and Aura are great sleep stage trackers on normal healthy sleepers. However, in the overview we were just looking at, I excluded many brands that I could not find in any scientific papers. However, I did include many of them in my testing, so let's take a look at these understudied brands. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, there's a link below. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people who receive watches to review from companies like Garmin, for instance, since they've never sent me a watch before release. And if you want to help me make that happen, it would really help if you like, subscribe and or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of all different brands.
And those results are displayed right here, where I include most of the testing I ever did, but I now color the devices based on reference device. So the devices marked in blue purple were tested against polysomnography, so the gold standard, whereas the devices marked in green and the uncolored ones were tested against two different EEG devices. Now there are a few important remarks to make here. First of all, there are some brands that are doing really well, but we didn't mention them before because there were no scientific studies about them. And these are especially the HSleep Pod, so the HSleep Pod 3 and 4, which are performing this same I would say none of them is doing better or worse based on my testing and also the Nukua app. Now be aware the HD pod is the most expensive device in this overview and also the Nukua app is not available everywhere so those are two important caveats. Also we can see that Google devices like the Google Pixel Watch, the Pixel Watch 2 and the Google Nest Hub 2 are doing quite well. They're doing about the same as Fitbit devices and that makes sense because Google now owns Fitbit and they're likely using the Fitbit algorithm for sleep stage tracking. And finally, if I generalize a lot, we can see that devices from Chinese manufacturers appear to be performing least well. This is likely just due to lack of investment in getting good data for training their algorithms. And I suspect this will likely improve over time like they've done with many product features. So overall, on me at least, Apple, Asleep, Nukua and Aura seem to be the best sleep stage trackers with Fitbit, Google and Whoop following not far behind. Now, if you have a relatively small budget, Fitbit is probably the way to go, though Fitbit is trying to push their subscription model and I'm a bit worried that their sleep stage tracking results might be locked behind some paywall at some point. If you have a bit more money to spend and you're really focused on sleep, then Aura is probably the way to go, though it does include a subscription. Apple is also really good at sleep stage tracking and the Apple Watch additionally has a great heart rate sensor for sports. The downside of all of this is that most Apple Watches have a one day battery life and that the Apple Health app is notoriously bad at making your sleep data interpretable. There are third party apps that might be able to solve this, but I personally haven't tested these yet. The Whoop strap is also a decent sleep stage tracker with good battery life, a nice app and better sports functionalities than for instance the Aura Ring. But again, this also includes a monthly fee. Finally, if you have a really high budget and you want to track your sleep without wearing anything on your body and you also want the ability to cool and heat each side of the bed independently, you should check out the HSleepPod 4. This latest version of the HSleepPod even has some snore reduction features if you buy the Ultra version. Have you probably only get good sleep stage tracking with any of these devices if you're a normal healthy sleeper and unfortunately those people with sleep issues are arguably the ones that could benefit most from tracking their sleep. I do suspect that manufacturers will get better and better at tracking sleep of even poor sleepers as they gather more data but be aware that this could be an issue for you. Also sleep is a very personal thing so even if on average some devices are better or worse your experience could be different. If you have a much different experience with some of these devices, please let us know in the comments below so others might benefit. Now, if you do decide to get an Apple Watch, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, an Pod 4, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support this channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now given that you watched this whole video on sleep tracking, check out this video on my top recommendations for sport and health tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.